Hello and welcome back to One World. I'm Linda Kincaid. The Taliban has been making promises that they would be much more moderate compared to the last time they were in power. But so far on women's issues, those promises are not being kept. You may remember the Taliban reassuring women after taking control of Kabul last month that they would be able to work. But the next day, they said it would be better for women to stay home for their own safety. Then this week, they announced their new government made up entirely of hardline men. And now a Taliban spokesman is telling local media there's no reason for women to hold government positions. Instead, he says women should focus on giving birth. And when women recently took to the streets in protest, Taliban fighters beat them, whipped them, along with journalists who were covering the march. But the United Nations has a message. We call on the Taliban to immediately cease the use of force towards and the arbitrary detention of those exercising their right to peaceful assembly and the journalists who are covering the protests. Protests have been taking place since the 15th of August and were increasing in number until Wednesday evening's instruction on the prohibition of unlawful assemblies. Reports indicate a growing resort to the harsh use of force against those involved in and those reporting on the demonstrations. We're time now for the exchange. Joining me now is Dr. Habiba Sarabi, a member of the former government's team that was negotiating with the Taliban and the first woman to become a governor in Afghanistan. A pleasure to have you with us. My pleasure, Linda. So you're a doctor, a hematologist, diagnosing and treating blood disorders. Uh, you're also a politician and also a reformer in the post-Taliban reconstruction of Afghanistan, a highly accomplished woman. And now your home country is, is under the rule of the Taliban. What does that mean for, for women like you and girls growing up in Afghanistan? Uh, to be honest, Linda, for the first time when we saw that immediately uh, Taliban occupied Kabul and the, the regime or the uh, the regime collapsed. It was shocking for everyone, for me too, that I was there in Doha and, and uh, we supposed to uh, come for some sort of agreement for transition, uh, political settlement and transition government or tra transition authority. So it was really shocking and we couldn't believe that things can be happening like this. And uh, of course, it's uh, the Taliban, the uh, uh, behavior or the Tal Taliban rule that they are applying now in inside Afghanistan. It's not something for us as a surprise because we know that uh, Taliban ha have the same mentality that they had in the past in 90s. Of course, now we, we are very happy that the technology helped all the women and the young generation in Afghanistan that they can uh, they can broadcast their uh, their voice and also they can send their voice to the international media and the other sisterhood and and, and brotherhood around the world otherwise they could uh, uh, i mean uh, shut uh, shut all the the uh, uh, stop all the uh, resistance and protest of, of uh, Afghan women and Afghan citizens inside the country. Unfortunately, they, their mentality is, uh, is the same. Because the, the, uh, their promises just because they wanted to attract the international community attention for their uh, own support. Otherwise, of course, uh, they don't uh, uh, believe to women's rights, human rights, uh, this uh, uh, universal value that all the other people in the globe believe to that and value for that. Uh, Dr. Sarabi, just for our viewers, I would like to play uh, a clip from a press conference from the Taliban when they first took over Afghanistan uh, and they promised that women would be respected, that women would be able to work and have human rights. Let's just take a listen. Women are part of a society. Women will work in various fields of the country while living under Syria. Women will work in education, health, and other fields, and will play an active role. Uh, well, today they're describing women who protested as prostitutes and saying that women shouldn't work in government, they should be restricted to, to, to having babies, to only giving birth. Uh, let's just take a listen of, of what we're hearing now. 
I did not mean all women. The four women protesting in the streets do not represent all the women of Afghanistan. The women of Afghanistan are those women who give birth to martyrdom in inculcated nation of Afghanistan and those who sacrifice their, their, their lives. The work a woman does, she cannot do that work. You are burdening her with something that she is unable to carry out. She is not capable. What useful thing can come out of that? Dr. Srabi, I heard one professional Afghan athlete uh, describe the Taliban as cavemen. How would you describe them? So, I, uh, to be honest, it's, it's their mentality. They don't, uh, uh, they always looking to women as uh, the second uh, uh, citizen of, of, or second human being. They, they always think that women are just uh, giving birth and doing the house chores and serving the, the men, the men or, or the, uh, uh, I mean, the one that to be respected from women. Of course, respect for, uh, can be from both sides, but they are saying, for example, women are not capable. We showed that we are capable. Women, we had the women minister, we had the, uh, I mean, so many young deputy minister, we had the women governor, we have women in different other positions. So we, we, we had so many women that they were much more capable than, than men. So, uh, but unfortunately, they don't believe that. This is their, the, the, the reality of their mentality. This is something that they, uh, they think about that or they believe about that. And that's why always now when, when women making reaction or protesting or making resistance, now they are, uh, they are thinking their uh, thought is uh, uh, something different or their action is something different uh, from their promise. Uh, they don't match both the promise and their action. So it shows their uh, real mentality. Dr. Sarabi, just quickly, why do you think Afghanistan fell back into the hands of the Taliban uh, with such ease? There was barely a shot fired by the Afghan army. Unfortunately, unfortunately, because, you know, there were so many things uh, were going wrong. First of all, I have to say that the international community in the top, the uh, U.S. were cheating us. It was a kind of fake. Uh, everything was fake, even the democracy that they were talking about it was fake and they're supporting to the, of course, we have got a lot of support from the international community on the top uh, U.S. But at the end, all the game was played a kind of underground, including the, the leadership of the Afghanistan. They played with uh, a game with the uh, Afghan people, unfortunately. They cheated Afghan people and uh, did something wrong. And when the, the, uh, the former president left, the country, of course, the moral of the all the military and and the the people were uh, got down. So that's why uh, everything uh, went to uh, wrong di direction, unfortunately. Dr. Habiba Sarabi, uh, good to get your perspective. Uh, we really appreciate your time today. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, a pivotal vote is just days away in California. On Tuesday, Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom will face a recall election. Michael Holmes explains how the recall came about and what it could mean for the entire country's political future.